Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yes! Greetings and salutations, my name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> and I am super excited to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop competition today. I'm about a week behind. I've got to look at this one from Dark Blue Swing Exchange 2020. It's an open Jack and Jill, which means this is the level that is typically associated with dancers who are not necessarily advanced. But I will warn you, that does not necessarily mean they are not advanced. And in many cases, I am thoroughly entertained watching the open Jack and Jill level. So let's get right into this one. And I'm going to tell you exactly what I was looking for right after it. Let's do it! Hey. And here we go. All right. Okay. This actually happened November 1st, so I'm really behind. I think they may have posted it later. Okay, I can tell right now the level is pretty evenly distributed amongst all the dancers. Um, I would say it's all around the same level, which is good. This is good, so I have to be really picky now to find those things that I'm looking for. A good old warm up. The audience looks to be a little bit more into it, so let's let's see if they are sincere in their responses. Right? In the chorus. And on the B, we're going to be playing low on dynamics very, very gently. And in the, in the end, we're going to make, make a break, and so you can showcase there. So if it helps. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the guitar player talking. Right. All right, let's do it. Who's first? I don't know why I'm feeling nervous. I, I don't know why. Okay, upper mid tempo. This is good. I like that already. A sense of style, personality. <clears throat> I saw that and I heard that.
<laughs> like, we're gonna solo dance, and we're gonna dance together. It's hard to break away like that and get back together seamlessly. That trombone player saw that. That was good. Oh! That was it. <clears throat> no, okay, round two. Okay, that's good.
Yes! Good job, guys. Good job, good job, good job. Let's talk about this one. Let's talk about it. All right, so let's get this straight out of the way. Watching this competition for this open, I've got to say that as a whole, the followers were better dancers than the leaders. I could really tell that the followers had the capacity to do so much more than the leaders were capable of giving them. And that's an interesting situation to be in as a follower. And I, and I felt bad for a lot of the followers because I could tell that the leader wasn't giving them enough to, to work with. But yet I did not see the followers fretting or having a significant amount of anxiety when they're dancing because of the lack of leading. So big shout out to all the followers who competed in this one. I noticed that right off the bat and that was awesome to see that their level is higher than what I thought for the open and uh, they danced in a way that was consistent no matter what was going on with the leading. Huge, huge, huge shout out for them. Now I will say for me as a whole, um, this competition was interesting to judge because I could, I could easily point out for me, the winner, I could easily point out the second place, which is the person who's missing one or two elements. And then the third place person was clear to me because they're the ones that are definitely separated from everyone else. You know, they're the clear mark to say, okay, this is the top three and I'm that person that's really making that distinction. And so <clears throat> it was really interesting because most of these people f fit the natural structure that I use for judging. It was so conspicuous. It was just right there for me to see, to, to prove my point. Third place had a pretty good idea of how to move their partner and the partners were responding. Second place had a little bit more than that. They had a little bit of timing and uh, they had some control. But the first place had some creativity, had some timing, had some control. Now, the first place main contribution wasn't that they had all three balanced well. I would say the first place person, the greatest strength <clears throat> lied in their ability to control the technique. This number one goes to the follower, but number two goes to the leader. Not doing too much, but more importantly, leading basic shapes so that we can clearly see that there's a call and response. And they were doing that with clarity, confidence, um, and without a lot of unnecessary distractions. And so the, the, the leader, the, the number one couple for me, the leader and the follower, they were the ones that had the gray vest. The gentleman had a gray vest, blue shirt, gray pants. She had black on. They had the best control. I wouldn't say they had the most creativity. They also had some really basic, simple timing to show us the music transitioning to another phrase. But that's not why they were first for me. That's not why they were first. They had the control part so strong uh, that it, it really overtook my perception of everybody else's dance level just by watching them. I could see clearly that they knew how to do it better. Why is that? Some of you might ask why, what were they doing? Well, they didn't, he didn't get distracted as a lead. Swing out, swing out again, circle, send out, talk turn, a single patient here and there, and a transition so that we can all see the music is changing. Very clear phrasing. Now that is not an objective thing in terms of what everybody needs to do. What's objective is that we have to be able to see clearly call and response in control. I want to see that. Can I see the technique of a leader sharing energy with the follower, follower responding? They look like one body in control. And sometimes that does rest in the leader's hand in terms of setting the tone of what's going to be suggested. And this leader was responsible. That's the way I looked at their dancing is that, that he was responsible. She was responsive. He was responsible. He wasn't trying anything outside of what was necessary. What was just necessary. 
And in this competition, what was necessary is the leaders having to prove that they could actually uh, control the technique. And I don't know if this leader knew that in his dancing. I just, I just knew that he was confident doing that. But clearly, that was the distinction between everybody else. Another thing that I thought <clears throat> was interesting is that the second place person could have got first, in my mind. This, the second place person for me was uh, the couple, she had like a whitish gray shirt with like flowers on it. And is that green pants, black pants, something like that? I think it's like green pants. And he had a green vest on, open collar shirt, really tall. He came out with some really flashy stylistic swing outs. I think what they were doing in terms of control was good. What was poor is the leader's ability to set up patterns that were predictable enough so that we as the audience could appreciate the response, the follower. He did some cool stuff with his legs, but then I was like, I was waiting for the follower to be able to show me her personality. And he kept getting in the way. It was just like, it was in the way. And then the leader was leading stuff that didn't really allow us to see anything. It was just like oh, a little turn here. It just kept the following close to him. And he was so big that I couldn't see the follower. The first place you could see what was happening. There was a swing out and there was a send out. And there was this constant movement. But I couldn't see it. It was cluttered. There was a lot of cluttered movement. What was frustrating too is they had the control. They could clearly manipulate the technique. But I couldn't see the follower moving enough without the leader being a distraction. And that, that part hurts me because that's more of a, a choice of what you're leading and not, not necessarily reflective of your leading capacity or your skill set. It does point to your, your choices that you're using uh, in the dance, but that can easily be manipulated. That can easily be changed. So for me, they were second. And that kind of hurts because I liked their styling the best together. But I just thought it was poor choices. And the poor choices can undermine everything, especially first place. And then their second set wasn't as strong uh, as their first set. The, the couple that got first place for me, they both sets were consistent. They could have literally did the exact same set. And I'm sure they probably, maybe they, maybe they did. I don't know. Because only, I'm only watching this one time. But they did, they had some consistency throughout both sets. I did not see clutter I didn't see the leader doing all this stuff, getting in the way of the follower. I could, I could see them both, and it was enjoyable. It was a bit um, normal, it was a bit vanilla, but that's okay when you're competing against others who may not be able to see that important element of just setting something up so my partner can be seen in the competition. So they were first, clearly first for me. Second place was clearly second. Third place for me was an interesting one because I thought they suffered the most from uh, what second place, the second place couple had. They, they suffered, of course, from clutter and the leader not having clarity of where, where he was suggesting the follower to go. It was too, it, too much in closed position, constantly keeping the partner closed. And this group, this couple, he had a tan jacket on. She had a tan pants. He had a black shirt on. Uh, I think she had kind of like a flowery shirt too. I liked, I liked their personality. I liked his personality. I thought he had the second most, or even in many cases, the first most distinctive personality in terms of style and trying different things. The problem was is his style got in the way of the technique. And that's the part I say you, you got to watch out for. Can't just put your style over everything that's come before. You've got to do Lindy Hop first, and then you want to add your style on top of it. That way you're adding a significant amount of value and not undermining it. So it, it, it was just frustrating because there were so many great ideas that were there that the leader suggested the follower was ready to go with it. But... Like the second place couple, they did not, he did not allow the follower to go somewhere with intentionality where the audience could appreciate it. It was just kind of like they were dancing in a room by themselves, trying different things, and the leader was kind of being silly and goofy. And I don't even mind silly and goofy if that's what your intention is. That's your style. But the problem is, is I couldn't see like enough basic stuff so that I could appreciate how you look doing basic swing. 
Tough turns. Texas Tommy swing out. Some basic Charleston. Just I want to see how bodies move doing the basic stuff so that when you do something different or embellish it, it's dramatically different. And I could see that distinction more clearly um, as a whole. And so those are my top three, folks. Those are my top three. I have to give it to the first place couple because that's the part that is hard to do when you first get into swing dancing, which is commit to just polishing some basic concepts, having the confidence to move through them with your partner and allowing your partner to move through those movements. Like the followers, like I said, they were in a different level. The followers, in my opinion, were should have been like in the advanced level. Should have been in the advanced level. And uh, the leader who won first place could have almost made it to an advance, like Jack and Jill type situation. Should have almost been in an advance. So I give it to them because they, they learned the thing that I look for the most when it comes to the technique at the open level, which is just you don't have to do a whole bunch, but just show me you can. Show me you can actually do it. Swing out, tuck turn, so on. The hard part at that level is doing what the third place couple did, which is having a personality and style and doing it with confidence and maintaining that while you are actually polishing the technique and never losing that personality. That's the hard part that it's really hard for, for me to help dancers understand is you don't want to lose that part that is you when you're social dancing and developing your personality and it's so easy to do that when you take classes and you get criticism and you lose competitions and then people say you should do this and you should be doing that. If you don't know the difference between, their, that's just their opinion. That's just what they want to see as opposed to what's good versus bad, what's bad. That's, that's a value judgment. That's m mostly opinion. But when it comes to those objective things, you've got to be able to manipulate the technique in a way so that you're not causing pain with your partner and both of you can get intentions met when you're moving moving together. And there's multiple ways to manipulate the technique. So in this case, this wasn't a problem of leaders not being able to know what to do. I thought the majority of the problems in this competition was the leaders did not know how to make the right kind of choices while the followers had the skill set to receive it either way. And that that's kind of a that's a big lesson. That's really the issue with the open level is you got to know what kind of choices you need to make. So if you're struggling with that, like you, you're trying to just figure out how does this thing work? I, I need to know the technical part and all, all I know is that I don't have a personality. I encourage you to check out some of my free courses. I post uh, about 24, 25 courses free. A lot of these ideas are my ideas, original stuff that I come up with. Uh, a lot of the content that you will be learning is from the original dancers. Some of the stuff that you have to know that really, if you did some of those things with clarity in competitions like this, you would probably win more often simply because you understood how to make it work, but then you would just simply go do it. But the important thing is, is hopefully the, the free courses will inspire you to start developing your style because what you're going to see is basically me doing what I do best, which is come up with new content all the time. So every single week, we're posting stuff on Monday and Tuesdays for our community online, and uh, it's a real treat. It's really fun. So those free the courses will give you a sample of that and will inspire you to just be, be better at social dancing so that when you enter these Jack and Jill competitions, you'll have a little bit more confidence and you'll have a little bit more perspective of what people are actually looking for. So I hope this was helpful for some of you. Um, I don't know everybody's names, um, which is okay. You know, it just helps me be able to just see the dancing. It's not easy getting out there and dance in front of an audience. So I know a lot of people probably had some nervous jitters, particularly a lot of the leaders, um, just based on what I saw. So I encourage you, don't be discouraged. Keep doing it. Keep getting out there and, and competing. When I did my first competition, it was crazy. I, I think I won like first for the Jack and Jill and then the Strictly I got third. And then my second competition, I got first. Just bam, just came out and, and it was crazy. So you, you want to keep pushing yourself and you want to figure out why you actually want to do the competition. And hopefully it isn't just about getting first place, right? It's got to be more than that. I really hope I can impart in you at least to start thinking about that when you compete. Don't just go for what making your movements uh, satisfy what the judges are looking for because then you will be living 
a lie if it's not you, okay? And that's not going to be fun when you um, try to decide who you are as a dancer. In fact, it's going to actually make it more frustrating. So don't forget that. As you guys are working on this and getting out there and you're competing, don't forget the element that people are looking for, but they will never really say that often, is we're looking for the unique you so that it will inspire us as judges, but also inspire dancers in the future. So take that um, and uh, apply it to your philosophy so it can help you. Anyways, let me know what you guys thought about this competition in the comment section. I thought it was interesting. Like I said up front, that, that's my view. I thought the followers were better as a whole than the leaders. And uh, this was more of an issue of leaders not making the right types of choices when they were leading to uh, get the ultimate result, which is allowing us to see how good you are with your partner to the music, not just leading moves, right? So anyway, let me know what you guys thought about this in the comment section. And uh, if I don't see you guys in one of my classes online, hopefully I get a chance to see some of your comments and reactions. Take care.